Hello and welcome to Big Red Journeys. I am your host Big Red and on today's journey we are here at the San Diego Automotive Museum because it is back. It has been a while. It just got recently remodeled and reopened due to the COVID pandemic but we are here to check it out. This museum has what is considered one of the largest collections of classic and vintage vehicles as well as having the second largest in the nation for motorcycles. So if you care to follow along with me on this journey, let's go. The San Diego Auto Museum was founded in 1988, a uh, strong fixture here in Balboa Park for many years. It recently just reopened a few months ago and as well as had a complete remodel. Uh, thanks in part to the shutdown here for COVID, they had the time and the ability to do some complete renovations. And in my honest opinion, it looks a whole lot better. In fact, as we enter into the museum, we are greeted by a new section called the Car Club Corner, um, where monthly, a, a new car club here in San Diego nominates a vehicle to be showcased here in the front. And here we have a 1957 Ford Thunderbird. We're entering into the section appropriately named the Red Ladies. As you can see here, we have some four beautiful, very exotic cars all painted in a very high race red. Here's a 1974 Lamborghini, a Countach. To the right is a 1992 Dodge Viper. Cool story behind this one. This was actually owned by Carl Berger Dodge here in San Diego. This is actually still has the title, original tires, original pieces, everything, almost like it never even left the showroom floor. A 1966 Bizzarini P538. Now what's very interesting and unique about this car, this is actually one of the first five ever made, but this one is the only one to actually have a Lamborghini engine inside of it. The other four had Corvette engines. Not only that, the tubing frame on the inside is actually round. So a round body, round body Lamborghini engine, and from then on forward, all the vehicles made after that were made with square tubing and with different engines, making this vehicle extra rare. And over here, we have a beautiful red Ferrari, a 1987 Testarossa. Classic, the epitome of 1980s automotive, especially with the high-end Italian luxury vehicles. Beautiful. A 1914 Ford Model T, AKA Tin Lizzy with an original crank start. What is considered by a few here at the museum to be the true price piece, this is a 1931 Cadillac 452, a Roadster V16, pushing 185 horsepower. The very famous little skate patch or opening door specifically meant for uh, golf clubs, for the businessmen taking their long little lunches. And this is a Roadster. And the reason behind that is because no windows. Look at that. No drop down, no roll down, no nothing. Beautiful console with the gauges, leather seating. Love the black and red on here. And of course the large housing for the very large V16 engine. A 1905 Rio roundabout. Coming in at a huge and whopping 16 horsepower. Love this. A beautiful 1925 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost. This one is unique not only for the fact that it's a Rolls Royce, which originally cost $15,000 back in 1925, but by the fact that it is actually a very rare left-handed driver. Reason behind that one? This one was actually built in the U.S. in Springfield, Massachusetts. This is the big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Ah, uh, well, it's a DeLorean. Man, this is heavy. A 1981 DeLorean DMC-12. Famous for the gold wings, famous for the uh, stainless steel metal plating, but of course most famous as the time traveling vehicle in the Back to the Future movie series. Built at the fastest speed, not of 
88 miles per hour, but of 110 miles per hour. So you go a little bit faster, it gets you through time a little bit quicker. Myself personally, I consider this one one of the best cars here in this whole collection. A 67 Mustang Bullet Fastback in the traditional bullet green made famous by Steve McQueen in the movie Bullet. Beautiful, look at the green, the sunshine coming off of that. The famed actor Steve McQueen who made famous the Bullet Mustang also made motorcycles popular in the 70s including this one in 1971 Husqvarna which he actually rode on any Sunday. His personal, a 1973 Honda CR250 here rotating on the wheel. This was his own personal bike from his own collection here. Um, so called the Elsinore, because it was named after Lake Elsinore, a very popular spot where he, his friends Paul Newman and others would actually ride their bikes, have fun. And speaking of Paul Newman, another very famed actor, this is his personal ZZ250 Side Piper, a 1970. This one was actually from the film that he rode in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Now, fun fact about this vehicle, not so much fun for Paul Newman, is that he actually took it one day during filming for a little bit of a joyride, ended up actually breaking his foot, thus delaying production for a couple months while he recouped. And the Fonz, hey, a 1949 Triumph. This was actually a screen-used motorcycle from the Happy Day set. And the Stratocycle, one of the Stratocycles that the very famed Evil Knievel, famous stuntman, drove himself. Look at that. Custom paint job, you can tell, of the bald eagle stripes and beautiful Evil Knievel outfit. A few beautiful examples of Indian motorcycles. A 47 Chief, 41 Indian 440, an original 1914 Big Twin with a factory sidecar. A 24 Chief. I like this one with the original uh, coil seats. Look at that. Traditional bicycle handlebars. And a 42 Army Model A41. A corner here of the museum dedicated to the uh, probably the most famous of all the motorcycle brands. Harley Davidson. We have a classic 1970s Harley Davidson XR750. A 1926 model P shooter, model A P shooter. Look at how simplistic it was. Re literally, it was a bicycle with an engine and a gas tank. A 97 Fat Boy. A military version, the 42 WLA Harley. Love the paint job. And an 81 Heritage. This beautiful striking blue and silver vehicle is a 40th anniversary edition, a 2005 Shelby Mustang CS6 concept. 40th because it was 40 years to the day in which the very first Shelby Mustang was created. This one even has Carol Shelby's actual signature right here on the driver's side door. This beautiful white 2011 GT350 was actually owned by Carol Shelby himself, VIN number one of this vehicle. A very rare 1965 Shelby Cobra, so-called the Shelby Cobra H2 for being hydrogen powered. This car back in 2001, uh, with the help of the University of California Riverside, created, they wanted to create a race car that could run and create a, and break a top speed record running purely on hydrogen fuel. And they were successful. In that same year, they were able to uh, go to the Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats 
and reach a top speed of nearly 140 miles per hour. For many, many, many years, this was the prized possession here at the Automotive Museum. The very famous 47 Cadillac owned by Louis Matars. A $75,000 Cadillac in 1947, or in the 50s I should say, when this car was modified, costs a pretty penny. And the reason this car is so famous, it actually has the world record for continuous non-stop driving. Over 6,000 miles from San Diego to New York, and in a second trip from Alaska to Mexico. Louie and two other men drove this car continuously, nonstop, cross country, and in it had all the amenities that they would need at home, including a shower, and the car held 50 gallons worth of hot and cold water, auto recorder to document their trips. They even had little uh, taps there for soda, water, and a little whiskey which uh, probably doesn't make sense nowadays but and a hookah hookah pipe right there in the center look at that all the amenities modified customized everything that they would need a telephone back in the day a tv was actually out there you can see it a small little uh, eight inch screen so he even had his own little ironing board washing machine basin right there sink and they were actually able to make any sort of repairs, changing tires, flats, modifications. They would actually be inner tires that would actually lift the vehicle up. You can see it right there. They would push those down, lift the vehicle up a little higher, and able to do modifications, change the vehicle tires, and use the little catwalk platform that you see to the side right there. They even had a wider version right there for the actual tires being changed, you can see. You may have heard of the term barn find. Uh, a treasure found in an abandoned place, a warehouse, a studio, a, even a barn. It just as this 1928 Studebaker was found here in San Diego at a local barn. Some of the treasures you can find there obviously hasn't been restored, but a classic car would love to see it in its prime. And some of the antiques and accessories you can find there if you were just to look. Well, that is going to do it for today's journey here at the San Diego Automotive Museum. I had a great time learning about some of these classic and vintage vehicles, the motorcycles, the history, and even seeing some of these vehicles that were owned and operated by some A-list celebrities. If you like what you saw, first of all, give this video a big thumbs up. Second, subscribe to the channel. And then third, take your journey to the next level by also hitting that notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever there's a video that comes across on the channel. And as always, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Big Red Journeys. Well, I'll take you on some further adventures here in Southern California, theme parks, museums, events, festivities, and more. So for me to you, thank you, and I'll see you on the next journey. Bye.